lessons, we looked at how transformations of functions work. We saw how we could take parent functions and apply different transformations to them using an RST chart. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can do transformations on exponential functions. Our parent function for exponential functions looks like f at x equals b to the exponent x, where b just happens to be our rate of growth or maybe it's a rate of decay, depending on what the value for b is. We're still using some of the same variables we saw before when we're performing our transformations. We might have a values, k values, c values, and d values, and they all represent the same types of transformations that we had previously learned. The a value represents vertical stretches or compressions, the k value represents horizontal stretches or compressions, the D value is a translation left or right, and the C value is a translation up or down. Also, if the A or K values are negative, we're going to have some reflections over the X axis or the Y axis. And let's not also forget that anything relating to the X value is backwards thinking. So if you see a value of K that's less than 1, that will actually be a horizontal stretch. And if the D value inside the brackets happens to be subtracting, well, backwards thinking would suggest that we're actually going to be translating to the right. Let's look at an example on how we can do a transformation on an exponential function. We want to graph the function y equals negative 2 to the exponent 2x minus 6 plus 5. Once it's graphed, we want to state the domain and range and also label the key points on the graph. We'll also label anything of importance. So if there's an asymptote, we're going to want to label that on the graph as well. Finally, we'll also explore the intervals of increase or decrease. So will our function be increasing over time or decreasing over time? And will the rate be at an increasing or decreasing rate? To start our transformation, we're going to need to identify first our parent function. Remembering that our parent function for exponential functions is always in the form y equals b to the x, where b happens to be our rate of growth or our rate of decay. Can you recognize what our growth rate will be in this example? Figuring out which number in our equation is the rate of growth or the b value is very important. And in this case, the rate of growth happens to be 2. It's this 2 that's sitting right there. It's common that there could also be an A value in front of our rate of growth, but in this example, there isn't one. But there is a negative sign, so we do need to be careful when we're figuring out what our transformations are that that negative sign is there. Okay, so now that we know that our parent function uses the rate of growth of 2, let's rewrite what our parent function looks like. It'll be y equals 2 to the exponent x. Now that we have this base function, we can now figure out what the other transformations will be on this parent function. I'm going to write out r, s, and t to represent our three different types of transformations. And let's see if we can figure out by looking at the equation what the different transformations are. The first thing I notice is the negative sign that's in front of the 2. We can recognize that this negative sign would normally be in front of the a value if there was one. But for our example, there isn't one. It still represents a reflection over the x-axis, so we're going to put that in our description here. Next, we have some values that are in the exponent. Because our variable x happens to be in the exponent, any of the numbers that are in the exponent will be relating to the x values, which means we have to consider backwards thinking. So we have 2x minus 6 in the exponent. If you've been keen, you may have been able to see that there is a little adjustment we need to make in the exponent to properly read what the transformations are. Don't forget that we have to factor out any value that is in front of the x to properly understand what the translations left or right will be. So this 2x minus 6 is actually supposed to be written factored as 2 times x minus 3. And so now we can see that the k value in front of the x is 2, which means that we're going to have a horizontal compression of 1 half.
There's also a negative 3 beside the x, so that is a translation to the right 3 units. Finally, we have this plus 5 that's just sitting out to the end, and that plus 5 represents a translation up 5 units. So now that we have all of our different transformations, we now need to put these into an RST chart so that we can then plot our new transform points. Okay, it looks like we have four different transformations here. A reflection over the x-axis, a horizontal compression of one half, moving right three units, and moving up five units. And so let's put these into the, our RST chart. A reflection over the x-axis will actually affect y values as we're flipping things from above the x-axis to below the x-axis. So we're going to multiply all of our y values by negative 1. A horizontal compression of 1 half affects our x values by multiplying all of our x values by 1 over 2. Finally, for our translations, moving right 3 will add 3 to all of our x values, and moving up 5 will add 5 to all of our y values. Okay, so now we need some key points in order to be able to transform them to our new points. So what are the key points that we have for y equals 2 to the x? Because for exponential functions, we're going to have a different parent function based on what our rate of growth is, we're going to need to come up with our five key points every single time. So let's start with a little t-chart here where we can put in x and y values, and we'll use x values that have 0 included, but also negative 1, negative 2, positive 1, and positive 2. The y values are just going to equal 2 to the exponent x. So let's start with our initial value. If x equals 0, then 2 to the exponent 0 is just going to equal 1. So that one's pretty easy to figure out. We're going to have a point 0, 1. If x equals 1, then we'll have 2 to the exponent 1, which is just equal to 2. And 2 to the exponent 2 is equal to 4, so that gives us that value. Putting in negative exponents, we'll have 2 to the exponent negative 1, that's equal to 1 half and 2 to the exponent negative 2, that's equal to 1 quarter. These are now five points that we can transform to new points using our RST chart. I'm going to give you the chance right now to do that. So why don't you take a couple seconds, transform these points to their new location, and then we'll see what the result is. Here are the transform points. Did you get the same ones? All right, let's plot these on our graph and see what it looks like with the parent function on the graph and the transform function. All right, so I've plotted the key points from our parent function y equals 2 to the exponent x. Let's now draw this curve through these points. Drawing nice exponential curves takes a bit of practice, but once you get good at it, you'll be able to draw nicely smoothed out curves you may have to just start in the middle, work one way, and then you can draw your curve up through the other way. Missed a couple of the points there, but you get the drift. The important thing here is that we recognize that there is this asymptote that's here on the x-axis. I can't let my line or my curve go past the x-axis or through that asymptote. All right, let's plot on our transformed points. So I'm going to start from the bottom here. So 4, 1. 3 and a half and 3, 3, 4, 2 and a half and 4 and a half, and finally 2 and 4.75, which is going to get us right around here. Now one thing that you have to be very careful of is where is the asymptote for this transformed function? Our original asymptote was at y equals 0. Asymptotes move just like translations do. So if our curve has been translated to the left or right, or up or down, asymptotes that are horizontal or vertical will also move in those directions. So this asymptote at y equals 0, which maybe we can draw a line that 
represents that asymptote right here, that will actually move up five units because our entire curve moved up five units. So if we take this asymptote and move it up five units, it will end up right here at y equals five. And so let's put that equation on there. Now you can kind of see that this curve, when we draw our new curve, it needs to follow that asymptote as well. So let's draw a smooth line through here as best we can. That'll extend out. And then we'll extend the curve through these dots as well. And it will shoot downwards just like that. Of course, we want to put the equation of our curve on here too. So y equals negative 2 to the exponent 2x minus 6 plus 5. We'll throw some key point labels on here as well. So we have the point 4, 1, 3 and a half, and 3 and 3, 4. Remember, graphing or plotting only three key points is okay, or labeling three key points. And we've labeled the line. So transforming exponential functions is very similar to transforming other parent functions. We just have to look out for other things that are unique to exponential functions, especially things like asymptotes. Okay, so let's state the domain and range. The domain for this graph is easy to see. This curve is going to continue onwards in the left direction and also in the right direction as it goes downwards. So our domain here is x, e, r. Our range on the other hand does have some limit to it as we can't go beyond this asymptote. So all of our y values are going to have to be below the asymptote, meaning that our range is y, e, r such that y has to be strictly less than 5. We've already labeled our asymptotes on the graph and we can see that our new asymptote is at y equals 5. The last thing we want to recognize is the interval of increase or decrease. And always moving from left to right, we can see that this curve is decreasing from left to right. But is it decreasing faster or slower as we move? Well, because the curve gets steeper as we go from left to right, we say that it's decreasing at an increased rate or faster. And that is a summary of how we transform exponential functions.